Most of the videos for the To-Do List app were recorded before iOS 14 was released. Now with iOS 14, Apple redesigned the default date picker format. Now chances are, your date picker looks different than what was displayed in the videos. It probably looks like this. And that's because the Xcode default when you create a new project is to use the latest iOS version, the simulator, and the latest version is to use this style here, which is called the compact date picker format. Now this isn't a good user interface because it doesn't fit nicely into the space that we created for the larger wheel. What we really want is for our app to recognize the iOS version. And if the iOS version is 14 or greater, then that uses the compact version of the date picker by default. So we'll show that to the right of the reminder set switch, and we won't show a text label since the new compact date picker control shows the currently selected date and time. And if you click anywhere in the compact date picker, a modal popover appears on top of the current view controller, and you can set the date or time, and you can just click anywhere outside of this popover to accept the change. But if the device or simulator is running a version of iOS below 14, then by default, and in fact the only style available is the old wheel style, so instead we'll show what we programmed already. The wheel style date picker is in a cell in our static table view that shows up when the reminder set switch is set, and the result of any date or time change will be put in this label that's just to the right of the reminder set switch. Now what we've currently coded is that when the user sets the reminder set switch to off, the extra table view cell in the section goes away, and we dim out this label on the right that holds the date and time. Now if you turn off the reminder set switch in iOS 14 or above, now we're not going to show any label in this version, but we'll simply disable the date picker that we're going to set up on the right, and we won't need to show any hidden table view cell in this section. Now to get this new behavior for iOS 14 and above, what we're going to have to do is add a new date picker to the right, and we'll use the default compact date picker format. We'll hide the label that we currently set up in here, and we'll ignore the extra table view cell that we'd previously set up. Otherwise, if we're running iOS below 14, we'll make sure that we're showing the label to the right of the switch, we'll hide our new date picker, and we'll use the code we've already written because the only date picker style we have is the old wheel style. Now, it's actually pretty easy to set up and code this change, and this is a good time for us to learn how to detect and respond to different versions of iOS. It's a very common thing to do if you're upgrading an existing app and you want to take advantage of newly released iOS features, but you want to make sure that your app still works for older versions of the operating system. And I'll show you how you can install additional simulators for prior versions of iOS, so you can test how your app runs on different iOS versions. So let's get to it. Now first, since we're gonna learn how to detect iOS versions, let's install an earlier version of the iOS simulator. So I'm gonna install iOS version 13 because my version of Xcode is currently running iOS version 14 in the simulators. Now we do that by heading up to the Xcode menu and selecting preferences, then select the components tab across the top. And we can find the version of the iOS simulator that we wanna install. For me, that's gonna be iOS 13.0. So I'll just click on the down arrow to download this. You'll be asked for your Mac's password, enter that, and the download will start. Now you can see over here on the right hand side that the download is over three and a quarter gig. I've cut the download time out of this video. And once you've got these components downloaded, you can close this dialog box. Now, if you want Xcode to run these earlier versions of iOS, there are two steps. First, what we need to do is we need to make sure that the deployment info for this project is set at or below the iOS version that we want to run. Let me show you how we do that. So first, we want to click on the project icon. That's the blue icon that you'll find at the top of the project navigator. And then make sure that targets is selected in the general tab across the top. And then there's a pull down menu that you see here under deployment info. Now, mine says 13.2, and this is no good if I want to run 13.0 because 13.2 is greater than 13.0. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull down in this menu, I'm gonna select 13.0. And the second thing we need to do is we need to head up to the scheme menu. Now, when we pull down here, you'll notice that iPhone 12 doesn't show different versions of iOS for us to select. That's because iPhone 12 requires that you run iOS 14 or above. But if we take a look at the iPhone 11s in this menu, we can see that we can select either iOS version 13 or 14. Now this is fine, I can go ahead and make those selections, but I wanna point out just if for some reason you're not seeing a version of the simulator that you want, you can go down here under the scheme menu and just select add additional simulators, then press the plus button in the lower left-hand corner of this window. You'll select the operating system version, the device type from these pull down menus. Now, I don't need to add a new version because I want to run iOS 13 on the iPhone 11 Pro, and I was already showing that. So I'm just going to exit out of this window, head back to my scheme, select iPhone 11 Pro for iOS 13, and then click on build and run. Now I already installed my app on an iPhone 12 in the simulator. I didn't show you that here, but I've got it up and running. I didn't quit out of my simulator. And what I can do here is I can actually launch the version of the app that I'd previously installed. Notice that the window title bar says that this is an iPhone 12 running iOS 14.4. And notice this is giving us the interface that we don't want. That's because we configured it for the old wheel style, but because iPhone 12 runs iOS 14, it's using the new version of the date picker, and that doesn't look very good. But now watch what happens when the simulator window for iOS 11 
Pro that I've just selected pops up. We can see right here in the Windows title bar that this is iPhone 11 Pro running iOS 13. And if I enter a to-do and set a reminder, we can see in this simulator for iOS 13, we're showing the old wheel style date picker properly. So now let's modify our app so that we show the right date picker UI for the right iOS version. So let's head back to Xcode. I'm gonna hide my debug navigator and stop the simulator. And then let's head over to the main storyboard. And now we've currently got our label showing to the right of our reminder set switch. Now that's good for iOS 13, but not for iOS 14. So if it's iOS 14, we wanna hide this label and we wanna show the new compact date picker here. So let's head up and click on the plus sign to show the library we'll search for and drag over a date picker and I'm going to position the right side of my date picker so that it lines up with the right side of the label in this table view cell and then in the document outline here I'm going to click and drag the date picker that I just added so that it's positioned above the label now what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that the label will show on top of the date picker so the items further down on the document outline are going to show on top of the items that are above them and then later on when we write our code, we'll just hide this label if we're running iOS 14 and we'll be able to see the date picker below it. And so now with the date picker selected in the document outline, and even though my document outline is narrow and you can't see the names, you can still see that I've selected the date picker because the date picker icon is next to the selected item here. Now I'm going to head down and I'm going to add new constraints for this date picker. So I'm going to set those to zero from the top, 16 to the right, zero from the bottom, nothing on the left hand side, but I'll set the width to 182 and I'll add four constraints. Now that looks cramped up. Up, but it's actually perfect. The label is on top of the date picker and it will obscure it. But to make sure that we get the obscuring effect, we'll set the background for the label to white. So let's head over to the document outline. We'll select the date label and that's this icon with a little L in it. And I'm going to first stretch the top and the bottom of the label so that it touches the top and the bottom of the table view cells content view. And then I'll head over to the attribute inspector for the label and I'll set the background color down here to system white. And notice now we can't see the date picker. It's still there, but it's behind the label and the label has a white background, so it's obscuring it. And now we can head over to the size inspector. We're using auto resizing for the label. I'm just gonna click inside this horizontal line for auto resizing to make sure that the label grows with the width of the device. Now we need to set up an IB outlet for our new date picker and then attach the date picker action that we've already written so that it accepts events from our new date picker as well. So let's click on to do detail view controller in the document outline and we'll option click on main storyboard so that we get in the assistant editor mode. And then we'll control drag from our new date picker. Again, make sure that you're selecting the date picker and not the label below it. So keep an eye on the icon to make sure that you've got the icon for the date picker. And we'll just rubber band over and release it to create an IV outlet. We'll name this compact date picker, lower camel case. We'll make sure that the type is UI date picker. It is, we've definitely selected that and not the label. So click on connect. And now that we've got our outlet, we can scroll down and we can find the IB action function date picker changed. And we're going to attach this to that new date picker as well. So the way that we're going to do that is we'll just click inside of the circle in the number line gutter just to the left of the IB action function date picker changed. And with that rubber band stretching out, we're going to release it when it's directly on top of the compact date picker label in the document outline, that one that we just created. And if you hover your cursor over the top of the filled in circle that's in the gutter, you should now see this IB action function for date picker changed is attached to both date pickers. Those are both highlighting in our storyboard. So that's great. Now we can close the main storyboard and we can return to the code in to do detail view controller. Now in view did load just under our super call, we're going to write code to show or hide the appropriate date picker. And to do that first, we'll check to see if we're running iOS 14 or greater. So to do that, we're going to say if pound sign or number sign available, no space in between that. And we see in code completion, we get this option here with two parameters, press return on that. And for the first parameter, I'm gonna type in IOS, notice code completion has this lowercase i, capital O, capital S, space 14.0. Now leave the asterisk in there for the second parameter that's required, and it'll take care of all future unannounced platforms so your app won't crash. And then let's add open and close curlies, then an else clause, and then open and close curlies again after that. And then in the first part of this if clause, if we detect iOS 14 or greater, we're going to set date picker equal to compact date picker. Now what this does is it allows us to use all of the remaining date picker code that we've already written. We're just saying from here on out, any reference to date picker also refers to compact date picker. Now in the next line, we'll also set date picker dot is hidden equal to false to make sure that it's showing and date label 
dot is hidden equal to true because we don't want that label to the right of our switch showing up. Then we can grab these two is hidden lines that we just wrote, copy them, and paste them down into the else clause down below. But we're going to change date picker to compact date picker, and we're going to change is hidden here to true because if we're not running iOS version 14 or above, then we don't want to show the compact date picker. Then we also want to make sure that we set our date label dot is hidden equals to false because we do want our date label to be showing here. And I'll just document these two clauses with comments saying that if true, then we're going to be using the compact version. And if false, we're going to be using the old dot wheel version. Now, next, we want to make sure that our new date picker is only going to be enabled when the reminder switch is on. So in our update user interface function, as the third line from the end of this function, we'll make some room here and we'll enter date picker dot is enabled equals reminder switch dot is on. So that'll enable or disable the date picker if the reminder switch is on or off. Now, we'll also need to do the same thing in update reminder switch. So why don't we highlight the line that we just wrote? We'll copy that and we'll head down to this function update reminder switch and just above our table view begin and end update lines we'll make some space in here we'll paste in the line that we just copied but we're in a closure for the local notification manager function so we need to add a self dot in front of both date picker and reminder switch now let's scroll down to our extension that holds the table view height for row at function and in the switch statement here we need to change the case if we've clicked on the date picker index path that happens if we click inside the section with the date picker and we need to change this because if we're running IO OS 14 or greater, we don't want to change the height of the cell that was hiding our own wheel style date picker. So we want to keep that hidden. So in this case, we're going to enter if pound sign available, no space, then select platform is iOS space 14.0. Then open and close curlies, else open and close curlies. And I'm going to cut out the return statement down below here. I'm going to paste that into our false condition. So if we're not running iOS 14, we want to do what we were doing before, which is check the reminder switch. And if it's on, then we want to show the cell with the wheel date picker. Otherwise, we want to hide it. And we hide it by returning a height of zero. But now if the true clause occurs, that means we are running iOS 14 or greater. We're just going to return zero. Now let's run the app under iOS 14 and iOS 13 so we can see the difference. So first we'll select iPhone 12 under the scheme. Now that's running iOS 14.4, hammer time. Here's our app. I happen to have a to-do item that's already in here with the reminder set. So when I click on that, look at this. We're showing the compact date picker, not the old label that held our date and time. And if we click on the date picker, this nice modal dialog pops up with a new date picker control. Looking great, just what we want. By the way, we can actually click and drag on the numbers up and down. So you still get a wheel style scroll. But if this were a real iOS device, you would also pop up a keyboard down below so that you could type the numbers in. Remember, if the keyboard isn't showing up in the simulator when it should, you could just press Command K. That should bring it up and click outside of the date picker, and that should accept what you just entered. So now for our other moment of truth, let's head back to Xcode. We'll stop what's running in the simulator, and under the scheme, you can select any iPhone that's running iOS 13.0. So I'll select an iPhone 11 Pro Max. Then build and run, hammer time again, and now back in the simulator, notice that we've launched iPhone 11 Pro with iOS 13. Now I still have my iPhone 12 with iOS 14.4 running. I can just command tab over to the simulator again, and that should show that device there. That's the one that I was previously simulating. I stopped the code from running on this, but I didn't quit out of the simulator. So that's why we still see our iPhone 12 up here. And look, I can click on my to-do list icon in the iPhone 12 under iOS 14.4, and I see our compact date picker. But now over here in iPhone 11 Pro with iOS 13, I can add a new to-do item. And will you look at that? The same code base, but it detects that it's not running iOS 14. So it's not showing the compact date picker. It is showing the label over here on the right hand side of the reminder set switch. And when we click on our reminder set switch to turn it on, we see our wheel date picker show up. Very nice. I hope this helped you learn some new techniques swifter. And I hope this also helped you update what we had written in the older videos so that it looks great on the latest versions of iOS. Keep at it.